Aye. What are you doing? Just give me five minutes, Undra. I'll be right there. Danielle, you know it's your job to collect the eggs from the coops. I'm on my way already, just... How do you expect me to serve breakfast like this? By the time you are finished, it'll be time for luncheon. Scarumba! What? Stop bossing me around. Let someone else do it for once, okay? Devon, stop staring and get to the kitchen right now. Don't bellow at me now. I haven't done anything. Well, maybe that is the problem. There's a pot of tea in the galley waiting to be served to Mr. Morton and his niece. Get to it, boy. The dining tray contained tea for the passengers. Good morning, Devon. How are you? Great, now... Ah, tut tut. Good. You're a quick learner. Now pour me a cup. Uncle? Just something between Mr. Rainsberg and I. Now tell me, are you feeling well, my dear? Excuse me, Uncle? Last night you were out of bed, Tabitha. Can you please explain to me what you were doing at three in the morning? I... I was just... Go on. I'm just concerned about what you left the cabin for. I had to... go and empty the chamber pot. Oh, I am so embarrassed, Uncle. You cannot ask a lady to speak such a thing in the presence of a servant. Of course. The chamber pot. Then why did I find this kerchief on my piano this morning? That is not mine, Uncle. I have no idea whom that belongs to. I've heard rumors of someone playing on my piano at night. But you were in our cabin most of the time, weren't you? Yes, Uncle, I was. Reading. The Cry of the Children by Elizabeth Browning is truly splendid poetry. Drivel, my dear. So you would have me believe there's a sailor missing his frilly hanky? I am saying it might very well be the silk of a sailor's wife, Uncle. It can get very lonely when you are away from your beloved. And, as they say, music comforts the soul. Very well. I shall give this to the captain tonight. Let him sort it out. Good. Oh, and if you, by any chance, want to play the piano sometime, by all means, do ask. I would love to hear you play, Tabitha. Thank you, Uncle. Don't mention it. Uncle, my cup, it's chipped. It hurts my lips when I sip from it. Sip from the other side, my dear. My left hand is weak. I can't hold a cup like that. Besides, it's entirely against etiquette. Steward, 
Take this one back to the kitchen and bring me a cup in pristine condition. As you wish, Lady Tabitha. And don't keep us waiting like you did yesterday evening. Tabitha had slipped a tiny note underneath her cup, asking me to meet her on the weather deck later. I see you got my message. Just pretend you are fanning me with that. Are you sure? It's freezing. I know. Just do as I say. It looks better that way. My uncle is not a man who'd sit idly for more than a minute or two, so I figured we could only meet if I pretended to read here. In case he walks by, we just tell him that you were making sure I was well cared for. Right, but what do you want to talk about? Remember that my uncle found a handkerchief? Well, it's not mine. I'm sure it belongs to the girl. I've seen her holding it a couple of times. Why didn't you tell this to your uncle? I don't want my uncle to know about any stowaways. He has been hot-tempered and very brusque lately. I don't know what he will do when he finds out about this. What do you want me to do, then? Tell the captain. I am sure he is reasonable. It's the only way we can avoid conflict. I am not sure if this is the best course of action, but I don't see any other options right now. It is better for all of us if the captain knows about this. He will take... What is that? It's coming straight at us. I need all the passengers to go to the deck house. Captain Hendricks, have you seen my uncle? In your cabin, Lady Tabitha. Go to him and take him to the dining saloon right away. It's safer there. I'll be on my way. Be careful when you take the stairs. They might be slippery. Brentsburg, have you seen Ludlow? It's not his shift. So he's probably in his cabin. I need Ludlow, Rensburg. Go get him, now. If there's anyone still below deck, get them to go to the dining saloon immediately. Unless it's the same. Then I want them to report to me. That's an order. The box was thrown on the floor. Ludlow's room was a bit of a mess. I wondered what had happened there. There was a necklace inside Ludlow's desk. It seemed to be a colonial design.
While going through Ludlow's room, I discovered several of Gehrig's missing laudanum bottles, all empty. I wanted to ask Ludlow before jumping to conclusions, but it was hard to not think the worst. Ludlow seemed to have sealed the hole in the wall after I had spied on him through it. Oh, thank God you're here, Mr. Rensburg. What's the matter, Doctor? Brunswick's wound is separating and his body temperature is very unstable. Someone has to hold him down while I'll drain the pus. The officer's life is at stake. I'm sorry, Doctor, but I'm afraid we need to leave here right now. I won't go with you unless you assist me in doing my job first. If you decide to help, you can find me in Officer Brunswick's cabin. Are you saying I'm blind? I know what you're up to, Ludlow. Of course you do, Haywood. I'm serious. When are you going to learn to keep to yourself? I was just... No excuses. What's going on here? That's what I want to know too, Ludlow. What were you doing rifling through my drawers? I just wanted to know if you had any nuts. Can you believe this man, Rensburg? <laughs> it must be that time of the month again. <sighs> fine, fine. I'm sorry. I was just looking for a wrench to... The wrenches are on the wall. <laughs> you tell me I'm the one who's blind. This is taking too long. We need to go. Come with me, Ludlow. Are you picking sides again, Rensburg? <laughs> the captain will hear of this anyway. I'm done trying to protect your ass, Ludlow. What's going on? Everything's moving. Get to the dining saloon, Rob. You're safer there. Devon, we're in trouble now. Why were you going through his drawers? I was panicking and I... Ouch. Be careful, miss. You might hurt yourself. I'm fine. Just a scratch. But I can't find my uncle anywhere. He wasn't in our cabin. I lost the girl too. I don't know where she is. One moment she was standing right next to me, and the next... You what? She could seriously hurt herself, officer. What if she fell overboard? It's not like I lost the girl on purpose. I was... I had a stomachache this morning and was distracted when she suddenly ran for it. A stomachache? Is that why you took those... That 
came from below. Let's take the stairs. Oh, God. My little girl, are you all right? <laughs> Please don't cry. I'll get you out of here. He went through that door, Lodlow. He's got a key to the cargo hold. Who are you talking about, Ian? The senator, Lewis Morton. What is going on in here? We were looking for you, sir. There's a storm underway and you're in danger down here. The storm can wait! Who is this girl and what is she doing aboard this ship? She's just lost, sir. She's all alone and I won't let her come to harm. Eliza! Mia menina, you are safe. I was so worried. Danielle? Who are you? And what do you think you are doing? I believe that this does not concern you, Senator. Please leave. What did you say? I want answers! And now! Uncle, don't be so harsh on him! No, no, it's fine. Really. I can't hide it from you much longer anyway. Hide what, exactly? The girl, her name is Elisa, and she's my daughter. Mr. Barris, I trusted you, even as someone from the Kingdom of Brazil. I held to believe that you had changed your ways. So, you know where I'm from? Your accent betrayed you. Although I have to admit, if Mr. Roberter hadn't told me about his suspicions, I would not have been convinced. Why was I not arrested then? All refugees to the free world are welcomed by the Protectorate and its allies. Your heritage is not a crime, but human trafficking is. She is his daughter, sir. Doesn't matter, officer. This man smuggled a human being aboard a government's chartered ship with immeasurable danger to her safety. Harboring a stowaway is a capital offense. That it is, and therefore I'm taking appropriate measures. Mr. Barris, you will stay under strict surveillance until we arrive in the Eastern Colonies. There you will be delivered to the authorities in waiting for your trial. Excuse me, Cornelius? He poses no danger, Lewis, and I need my crew. Please let the authorities handle this. You are the authority on this ship. I am an authority on this ship. We sentence him here, right now. That cannot be legal, sir. It is entirely legal for us to carry out a punishment that is permitted by law. And who verifies what is lawful? On the Herald, that would be me. Please, Senator. Danielle and his daughter have suffered enough. Be quiet, Mr. Rensburg. The crime in question mandates a flogging by whip. 
You can't do this! The whip's been banned in the capital, sir. The ship doesn't even carry a whip anymore. We are not in the capital anymore, officer. And may I remind you that our captain is a collector of exotic weaponry? I don't see what that has to do with anything, sir. The captain has a rattan cane, an object often used in the eastern colonies to flog criminals. It would be an excellent choice in this case. You want me to get a rattan? Fair enough. If they do it in the colonies, why can't we? Because we are better than that, Captain! That's why! Ludlow is right, sir. This is wrong, and we should not do it. I cannot let this slide, Ludlow. Punishment is entirely justified here. This has taken long enough. The Captain has every right to punish Mr. Barris for his crimes. Take Mr. Barris to the weather deck, officer. Senator, please! I beg you to listen to me! Danielle merely protected his daughter, sir! What would you do? I wouldn't lie. Besides, I have no daughter. But what if it was your wife that had died, just like Danielle's love? What if you had a daughter together, and she was the only thing you had left of her? Wouldn't you do everything for the child, to make up for the loss of your wife? That's enough, Stuart! Mr. Rendsburg, I heard rumors that you were an illegitimate child in search of your roots. That alone is supposedly the reason you travel to the Eastern Colonies. Do you like it when other people talk about your private life behind your back? I thought not. Truly, I find it repulsive that you bring my late wife into this matter. <sighs> but you're right. I would do anything to make up for the loss of my Eleanor, even if that meant breaking the law. Take Mr. Barris to the brig, Officer Ludlow. The flogging is off. Thank you so much, Senator. And you too, Devon. Please, take care of Elisa for me. She has a little handkerchief. Whenever she cries, just give that to her. It was her mother's. Oh, the kerchief was hers. Such a pity that I dropped it in the ocean this morning. Trying to protect his daughter, Danielle had brought himself into harm's way. Powerless and broken, he was locked up in the brig with Ian. Although the mystery of the girl was now solved, another question quickly arose. For what had Senator Morton been doing in the cargo hold during the storm?
you stood up to the senator? And I am to believe you made him feel sorry for his actions? Well, next you'll be telling me you met a mermaid. I did meet a mermaid once. She was very... Stop the nonsense. Fine, if you say so. Then maybe I was wrong about protectorians after all. Though I'm still in the process of finding out if I was wrong about you, too. Are you willing to prove yourself to me, Devon? I'll do it if it gets me out of here. Answer me. Did you or did you not rummage through my strongbox while I was away? Yes, I did. Did you read the articles? Yes, I read a newspaper clipping. Good. Then you also know what they did to my husband. To my family. But who are you then? I am... No, I was a queen. Once. The Protectorate took my kingdom from me by murdering my husband, the Raja of Mishra. I don't really get it yet. Why and how? The Protectorate made it all look like an accident. But I knew it was murder from the moment I was informed of my husband's death. For I have only daughters. Without a legitimate heir, the doctrine of lapse made sure that the rule of our entire state would fall to the Protectorate. I'd have expected you to put up a fight. Oh, we did. And paid a high price for it. When I refused to leave my people, Protectorate forces marched on the palace. They butchered almost all of my household staff, the Raja's second and third wives, even some of my daughters that didn't want to flee with me. I left them, Devon. I left my children to die. How did I end up in this again? What are these? Candelabra? Well, I know tea. So aromatic.
my ancestors made these murals. They tell stories of a resilient people that lived off the land, a people that overcame many hardships, even in their darkest hours. The stories used to instill in me a sense of hope for our future. But I am losing faith, Devon. What do you want from me? Look around. We are surrounded by the corpse of a culture that once flourished in this region. Your mother was once part of that culture, a culture which carried a long and proud tradition that is no more. It is the protectorate that made it so. The Lord Protector stole our colours, bagged them and shipped them off afar. And now the cockerel is brandishing our plucked feathers right under my nose, taunting me in the hope that I lash out. As tempting as it may be, my people can't afford that. I don't want to legitimize him wiping us from history. I don't want to grant him that pleasure. I'm losing hope, Devon. And what last opportunity I have left now rests in the hands of a few in whom I've placed my trust. I'd like you to meet one of them. In fact, you have met before. This is my daughter, Ashna. Hello, Devon. It's good to see you've recovered. <laughs>